welcome back to my channel and if you are new, welcome! My name is Meg and today I'm going to show you how I get my go-to glam makeup look. I love having a go-to glam because this is something that I know I can do this eye look in 10 minutes or less. I can put my face together really well. I know that it's going to look good together. Anytime that I'm in Vegas, you can catch me with this makeup. And anytime I'm traveling, I have the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette. This thing is amazing. It's my favorite eyeshadow palette so far that has come out. It has everything that you could possibly need. It has a lot of neutrals. It has colors in it. It has shimmers. So it is a palette that travels really easy. It's pretty durable. I haven't had any issues with it breaking, obviously. So if you would like to see how I get this go-to glam look, let's get into it. Kicking the video off with what I've already used on my face. I love to exfoliate with my Tarte Friction Stick. This is really great. If you wanted to use it daily, you could. I use it probably about three times a week on my face. You can also leave it on as a mask. This is my go-to moisturizer for during the day when my skin isn't feeling quite as dry. This is a Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream Moisturizer for dry skin. So I just put a layer of that on my face. Also, before I put product on, I like to moisturize my lips, so I use a Jack Black Lip Balm, and I love the Shea Butter scent. For foundation today, I'm wearing my Holy Grail Lancome TNI Doll Foundation in the shade 090 Ivory Neutral. For my under eye concealer and to brighten in other places, I use the Urban Decay Naked Skin in the shade Fair. This is a really great lightweight concealer if you have dry skin. To prep my lid space, I use a different concealer. This is a Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Fair. This is super opaque and that is why I love using it for prepping my lid space. For brows lately, I've been loving the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Medium Brown. And lastly, to set everything in place, including my eyelids, I use the RCMA No Color Translucent Powder. Now that we have the base down, let's roll into the rest of the video. Seriously, would it even be a video of mine if I wasn't constantly dropping things? Alright, so now we are caught up on my base, so I'm just going to quickly run it through and show you guys what I like to wear for powders on top of my face when I do a really glam look. And of course, if you have no interest in this and you just want to see the eye tutorial, I will leave the time stamp right here so you know where to fast forward to. So, for contour, what I love to use is this Tardis Pro Glow palette. I really like the shade Sculpt in here. It is the only powder bronzer in the palette. And I just like applying this with a Morphe M435. It's like a really nice angled brush. It fits nicely into my cheekbones. I always start off by lightly patting and stamping the product down because I like it to be pretty intense and then you can blend it out. Once I have it laid down on my cheekbones, I will then start to drag whatever product is left over up the sides of my face to my temple. And then I will take a little bit more, focus it more on the temples, and then just lightly bring whatever is left towards the middle of my forehead. For my jawline, I focus most of the product under my chin, because that's my problem area, and then whatever is left, I will just run it back and forth. I will tend to go a little heavy on this because I hate blending foundation down to my neck, so I think if I do like a really nice contour jawline, it might be less obvious, but that is the delusion I like to live in. I love Physician Formula Butter Bronzer. This is in the original shade before they made different shades of it. And I just use a Sephora blush brush and I just lightly go over, like barely touching it to my skin, kind of slightly above where I place the contour. So I'm going a little bit onto my cheekbones with this and blending it up into my temple and forehead, like so. Then what was ever left, I will run down the side of my nose. My nose cannot handle a good amount of product, so that is why I go very light. I would love to contour my nose more than what I do, but it will just pick up product and look patchy and awful, so. When using a more full coverage like the Lancome foundation, it can be so easy for your face to just look like a blank slate, so adding color and dimension back into the face 
helps warm you back up and look a little bit more human. Of course, I'm using my Tarte Party Blush. This is like a birthday sample from Sephora, I think two years ago. And I just take a little bit, tap most of it off, and then I like to take it mostly from like the pupil of my eye back. I don't like a lot of blush on the actual apples of my cheeks. I just like to blend it into the um, bronzer and contour. And of course, I have like these weird patches on my face today, so that's always fun. I know this looks really harsh right now, but the eye look will help balance it out. Now on to my favorite part, which is highlight, and I use three different ones, so stay with me here. I use the Becca Moonstone as a base because it gives off more of a natural finish. Then on the highest points of my cheekbones, I will go in with Ofra Cosmetics Glaze Donut Highlight, and I will also put this down the tip of my nose. And then for the very tops of my cheekbones, I take Miramay Highlight by Dose of Colors. It is more of a rose gold tone, so it looks really nice as a blush topper. Right here, you can see the difference of using glazed donut. So this side, you can notice my highlight a little bit more, but when I turn to the side, it is just like wha-bam. And this side is really soft and really pretty, and I just like the added intensity of glazed donut. So here you can see the difference when I smile. There is definitely more of a shine on my actual cheekbone, and I do prefer that to blush. And it just kind of like fades nicely into the moonstone and glazed donut, and I am obsessed. After applying a face of powdered products, you may look a little bit powdery, so it is time to set the face. Some people prefer to do this once they get their eyeshadow on. I just like to do it as soon as I finish my base products. So I'm taking the MAC VIX Plus and I'm going to set. Morning you guys now. A lot of the brushes that I'm going to be using are stained. So they're clean but they're dirty. So what that means is that I have wiped off the excess of the product. So the bristles are stained but I'm not going to get purple on my lid or anything. See what I mean? Saves you some time in between cleaning but don't be alarmed. It is time to get started with the eye tutorial. I'm dipping into my Holy Grail eyeshadow palette, the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Shadow Palette, and I'm taking a combination of Silk Cream and MFEO. These two I'm putting down one layer, and then I'm going to dip into Puder in combination of those two and put down a second layer into my crease. I personally like having a winged out shape, so here you can see me going just straight across in my crease and upward, and that is going to give you that outer V shape. This would also look really nice if you wanted to keep things rounded, but that is a general shape of this tutorial, so I'm going to also be bringing all crease colors from the outer corner to the inner corner. Here I've dipped into all three shadows twice to build up this level of opaqueness. And then to make sure everything is blended, I do like to take a giant fluffy brush and I'm just blending the edge of my crease so it looks like a nice gradient towards my brow bone. It is time to deepen and darken things up, so I'm taking Buns, which is my favorite color in the palette, I think, in combination with Mocha. I'm going to dip my brush in back and forth between the two, and I'm using the same blending brush. This is a Real Techniques 203 blending brush, and I'm going to apply this in the same motion, same outer V shape, and then from outer corner to inner corner along with blending this on the outer third of my eye because I really want to add some depth, darkness, and dimension there. And with this, you just don't want to blend it up quite as high. We are going to be layering things closer and closer to the center of the crease. Again, I probably dipped into the palette twice to get this amount of payoff. Now to deepen things further, I'm going to take the darkest brown in the palette, this is Central Perk, and I'm going to use an oval shaped brush for this. I love this because I feel like it does really good crease work, and I'm just really going to focus on most of the color in the outer corner of that crease and just really depositing it there and blending it outwards. A good way to get high impact color is to first stamp the color on where you want it and then blend it out. This is also a great time to really define the shape of the outer eye and just make sure you're going back and forth with other brushes that you use to blend your edges. 
Another tip, if you feel that you made something too dark or blended something darker too high up, you can always go in with a big fluffy brush. And if that's not working, you could take the lighter transition color onto that brush and blend it where you need things toned down. The only thing the Jaclyn Hill palette is missing is a matte cream. So I went into the KKWX Mario palette and took the shade Decade. I'm also taking this on a fluffy brush because I want to lightly blend the very top edge of where my crease colors are. And I'm just buffing this into the brow bone area. This is also another trick. If you accidentally blended something too high or too dark, you can also use a matte cream to tone it down. But here, I just really wanted to have a nice blended edge up to the brow bone. Because my go-to glam look is pretty fast, I'm gonna be doing a lazy or a soft cut crease. If you wanna go all out, get your concealer and carve it out. But for me, I'm skipping over that and I'm just going to go in with Faint, which is that beautiful sparkly pink color on a tapered flat brush. I am placing this on the center of my lid. So a good idea for placement of this is from the start of your iris to the end of your iris and just make sure that you blend that outer corner. Now I am taking Obsessed, which is a great name because it's like my favorite shimmer in the whole palette. And I'm just gonna take the other side of that tapered flat brush and just place that into the very inner third of my lid. You can also really intensify these shimmers by wetting the brush with Vix Plus setting spray or water. To highlight, I am taking the very first two colors in the palette. This is in Light and Beam. And I'm gonna take that on a pencil brush. I use a pencil type brush when I really want to have a high impact highlight. Really packs the color on there for me. And again, you can intensify this by wetting the brush. I'm gonna be placing this highlight directly under my brow and into my very inner corner. Once I have my highlight place, it is time to move on down to the lower lash line and I really like to smoke mine out. So I'm going back in with Central Perk on a flat liner brush. This is a Morphe M432 and I'm just going to stamp this as close to my lash line as I can from outer corner to almost the inner corner. Once I am happy with the opaqueness of that, it's gonna serve as our quote unquote liner, I'm going to go back in with buns and blend that line out and smudge it about with the Morphe E36. I will be blending and smudging a lot more off camera to save time, but I do always like to tie my outer corner up into my crease. To blend that out even further, I'm going back in with Pooter using the same brush to smoke out that edge. Basically your lower lash line is a repeat of what you did in your crease in reverse order. Some of the inner corner highlight may get lost in all the blending, so I'm taking that tapered brush again and just packing on the highlight. I really like to also drag it down in the very like inner fourth of my lower lash line because I really think it helps brighten up your eyes and open up your eyes even more. I typically like to do a softer liner because it's honestly a lot faster and more mistake proof than going in with liquid liner. So I'm just going to take Central Perk on a Sephora angled brush and get this close to my lash line and wing it out. I like my lashes to be slightly less dramatic, so I'm just taking my Ardell Wispies. Bad news, my camera stopped recording while I was finishing off my eyes. So, basically what I did with the angled brush is that I outlined with shadow where I wanted my wing to be. A lot of the times, I will like a really subtle wing, and I will just use eyeshadow for winged liner. I really wanted to define my lash line a little bit more, so I just went over that with the Kat Von D liquid liner in the shade Trooper. For my lips, I just went in with my NYX lip pencil in nude suede shoes. It's like the perfect nudie pink for me. I love this. I literally just lined my lips, filled it in, and then for gloss, I just took the tiniest amount of Super Nude by KKW Beauty, put it on top, and this is the finished look. 
I had a lot of fun filming this video, so I really hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something cool from it. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below with what your go-to makeup look is. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.